Amnesia the Bunker is the latest game from Frictional Games, and today I sat down with composer Miko Tharmia to learn more about the soundtrack. So I've split this interview up into four different categories so we can go over certain things in a specific order. Let's start with the planning. So what was your reaction to being asked to score another new Amnesia game? Well, the new Amnesia game came actually kind of out of the blue. Yeah, it initially started as a DLC for Amnesia Rebirth, as people found in the game files. Um, but the product seemed to like get bigger and then spiral off onto its own thing. I just heard, okay, well, here's the thing. We are going to make a new Amnesia game and it's called The Bunker. We had the first first uh, like a, like a meeting between Frederick and uh, Mike and me and uh, we just set the tone for the game and uh, they said they want to be very minimal, very minimalistic score. What was your reaction to the, the concept of it for the, for the new game? What did you think? Yeah, I was slightly surprised because the, the report didn't do that well because it, it had mixed re reactions. I think it was a very good game and uh, so did the press, but uh, I think it has had some big expectations mm. from the first one. I, I first thing was thinking they're going to take another risk, but uh, the direction itself where it went, like uh, this kind of amnesia game, was a, a surprise. It, it seems like everyone is liking this game. A yeah, lot. the the overall. I think that was a question for later on. Was um, no, I think I cut that question out because I didn't want to word it as like seeming too negative. But uh, it was going to be about Rebirth's release and how it was quite mixed on release. People didn't really know what to what they wanted from a new Amnesia game, and when they got it, they they weren't very happy with it because it wasn't how they envisioned it. But Bunker seems to be scratching that like Amnesia name in a way that the other game didn't. But and people seem to resonate with that more. Yes, but they have something in common, like of course the Amnesia itself, like uh, you can't remember things. But uh, I think there's a connection in, in the lore. Oh yeah, there's there's lore connections. Even in, in the bunker. Yes. Small small things, small things. Hmm. I'm the law nerd for this series. I know I know all of it. The all the four are like a different kind of games. Maybe it wouldn't make a sense to go back to Brandenburg and make another castle adventure. Mm -hmm. Maybe. It could work, of course, but... The... I'm glad the Abuja series is always doing something new. I'm, I'm quite proud of Frictional for that, because it, it would be really easy to just keep things the same. And th some things have stayed the same, but I'm glad that every game has like a noticeable shift in in environment and atmosphere and, and game. I'm dying, excuse me, and gameplay. Every time I get interrupted, my throat just like swallows for no yeah. reason. I get interrupted <laughs> by myself. But I think one of the things which, which works in both Amnesia and Soma and the bunker are the claustrophobic things. Like you are in one space and you want to get out from there. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Rebirth, there's, there are more claustrophobic segments in the game, but uh, there's a wizard is, is it itself so scary, I think. Mm. You have lots of more time to breathe, like, uh, to feel safer. Mm. Rebirth, Rebirth Sphere, where, where Dark Descent and Bunker, they bring their scares from like the claustrophobia and the, the cramped spaces, Rebirth Sphere was the open space. And I feel like that just didn't really scare a lot of people. Like, I don't think people could put themselves in that situation as easy as they could the, the other situations, but it's, it's just a different type of fear. Like, it's, it's yeah. just a polar opposite of itself, but it, some people find that scary, like big open spaces, so. I thought I thought Rebirth just looked really pretty. I, I thought it was too much of like a, it looked like a holiday destination. Like we're on a beach or we're in a, we're in a nice sandy desert. So I was like, wow, I'm not scared at all. This just looks yeah. great. <laughs> those were the moments. <laughs> hmm. So what was the most important piece of feedback you received from Amnesia Rebirth? Like negative or positive? And how did you want to remedy that and expand on that for this soundtrack? Um, I didn't get much feedback. I don't know. Because the, the thing that I read the most and saw the most about Rebirth's music is that it wasn't as memorable. Perhaps. Like there's more melodic 
themes or melodic tracks. I think people just saw more Dark Descent stuff and they listened to more Dark Descent music, so that was just naturally... Because that game blew up, so it's like I think that was just more ingrained into people's heads rather than... But Rebirth didn't have that much time. Rebirth, what, been out for like not even three years, you know? People had ten years of Dark Descent to get all the memory, all the, the music and the melodies stuck in their head. So I think it was just a weird critique to put on people, that people put on, but yeah. No, perhaps not, because the Dark Descent was something new when it came out. At that point I was still experimenting doing horror stuff, because it was only, only a few years earlier, like when I did Penumbra series. Hmm. And uh, that was the first time I did scary music, so I, uh, I had experiment with do, doing a new type of maybe scary music, at least for myself. And now that's the thing you're most known for, is the scary music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which is a, can be a double-edged sword, but... Yeah, that's not a bad thing. People know me about scary music, and I, or maybe <laughs> perhaps all the projects I do are horror stuff. Hmm. But the, but that's not a bad thing. No, and there's plenty of non-horror music that you make in these games as well, but... Is good. It's good pacing. It's good contrast. So, yeah, all the story-driven music, which has something to tell about the story, they are more melodic, and not the horror music at all. Hmm. With other games that you've scored, like Rebirth, you used instrumentation from real-life regions and culture to complement the environments of the game world and to expand on that. Did you research any particular instruments uh, related to like World War One era stuff, or did you use any props to, to make any creative sounds? I tried to add a French nuance to music at some spots. No, there's no accordion or something <laughs> like that, but <laughs> there's some slight French music, the noises of French music in punk as well, mm -hmm. the melodic themes. I'm not talking about the, the few story-driven tracks, but I'm talking about the ambient stuff or the chase music. from synthesizers and uh, real instruments. Mm -hmm. What they want to want it, of course, it, that, that it doesn't sound like it came, came from the synthesizer. They want it to be organic and um, very subtle and uh, very minimalistic. Mm. Now I want to talk about the development. What plugins, VSTs and instruments did you end up using for the soundtrack? Uh, maybe the new stuff which I was trying it was a uh, isotope iris tool which is more like a sample manipulation synthesizer mm. so I recorded real instruments to it and uh, you can hear the, some things which I recorded like a bassoon it's familiar from the, the dark descent mm -hmm. and uh, it's present in this core as well but uh, like a cello and uh, other things as well. Also the new stuff, I have a modular set behind me, like a, there were a couple of uh, texture synthesizers mm -hmm. where I can, I can put any signal through and uh, they like uh, are producing like uh, weird stuff. That has quite many possibilities to do sounds. But those are like uh, the new things when compared to what I did with Rebirth. Because mm. I, I noticed a couple of, um, there's some of the same things from Rebirth that we used in Rebirth. Some of the stuff, like the French the French named song that I'm not going to try and pronounce, that has almost all like Dark Descent and Penumbra stuff from, from years ago. Uh, and that was, that was lovely. That was so nice to hear. When I heard the Penumbra string, like, because Penumbra string has a, like, you've used it in a couple of other tracks, especially in a, uh, behind dark images you use it there's like a certain trill like a like a noise it makes uh from the articulation and i've, I've just always associated that with penumbra so when i heard it in 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 the, in the full song in bunker i was like oh man it was just nice nostalgia for me but, um... i'm still using the same sound libraries that i have 
when I was working with Chronopore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hear them every now and then. I'm yeah. like, oh, he's using that. He's using that again. And it yeah, yeah. Does a smile on my face. But there's always there's always new stuff, which is nice. It's good. To, it's good that like you have a lot of the same tools, but your tool toolbox keeps expanding. So yeah, I, I like to try to evolve with my methods doing scary stuff. So I'm always trying some new things. That's what makes it interesting hmm. to me. It comes through, yeah. It, it definitely shows in the soundtracks that you're always doing different stuff. It's it's always interesting because frictional games and and the music themselves, they, it always shifts with itself. And there's always like familiar callbacks and the same like plugins or the same you know like textures and stuff like that from from both the music and in the game development standpoint of it and it's always interesting to see how things stay the same but also get expanded upon from both angles i really like that soma and amnesia we both both had a five-year gap in releases but bunker is the fastest developed game friction was released since the jump between the penumbra series and the first amnesia game however bunker also has the least amount of music present out of any frictional game so far did that make you feel more limited or restricted or did you feel like you had more freedom to work this time because of that no the bunker soundtrack is the most minimalistic soundtrack and the shortest soundtrack I've done for fiction games. Mm. Uh, it didn't require lots of music, so I did perhaps under 100, 100 hours for everything. Wow. It was quite a <laughs> fast as a score to do, because the amount of different environments and events was so small. Mm. So there was not that much the music to work on. So you found tracks it? are yeah the tracks are maybe slightly longer than usual, maybe four minutes ish ish. Mm. Per ambient songs, but there are like a, there's not that much story driven tracks, like a, only few. So there wasn't that much work to do. Or well, you didn't have to make like six thousand like thirty second diary entry tracks, <laughs> like Doctor <Dr>. said. <laughs> Yeah, and there were, were only few tracks that I had to redo, so... Mm. So it was easier overall this time? Yeah. Hey, building off of that one, um, typically Fractal Games includes lots of unused music in the game files, but this time around there aren't that many unused tracks, and it makes me wonder if they just cut them out, or if there wasn't that much cut at all. There wasn't that much. Bunker's sound profile is very different than the other Amnesia games, and there's a lot more of a focus on the industrial themes and distortion. So this question is basically just for me, like, I, I, I really, I'm so curious to see how you made some of the sounds in, in both the tracks, the, the rat track and the shotgunner track. Because the, some of the textures in there are weird, and it's, it's really cool to listen to. Yeah, you mean the... Like the first layer tracks. Um, the layer. All of them. Uh, the shotgunner has the bassoon sound, which I made with Iris, and uh, of course it went through some serious processing hmm. that it doesn't sound like a bassoon. <laughs> <laughs> The, the rat track has a more like a distorted cello sound. I could hear the cello, the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that was some just some noises I went no, I did with cello. Hmm. What 
about the, the higher pitched frequencies in the rat track? What was that? Because that, that's really strange to listen to. That was some weird sound I put through my texture synthesizers. Hmm. I can't recall its source, but uh, that's kind of weird texture, like you say. <laughs> it's, it's very weird, very distinct, very different to, to other textures that we've had from the series. It's like the one of the least organic noises, which Amnesia soundtrack typically focuses on the organic stuff, which was really interesting to see that here some of the sort of like more industrial like electronic noises came through in the soundtrack. Yeah, what I recall its source is electronic. The final topic is reception. So what are your thoughts overall about the soundtrack? Is there anything you do differently? Maybe part of it. I don't know. Overall I'm happy with this how the score came out. But uh, it's a short score and uh, there were many there weren't many story driven tracks like I told, but uh, the ones I did, I'm happy with the theme itself, which you can hear in the end credits track and uh, and the inner team as well. I like I like that. And the end credits music was quite fast to do when I was done with the the, the motif or the basis of the menu track itself. Hmm. But some of the tracks like um, are maybe mid bit monotonous. They work in the game itself quite well, but um, I decided to get rid of a couple of tracks from the soundtrack because hmm. they sounded a bit dull. I get that, yeah. Like, so, some of my favourite stuff from you is the the sort of more drone ambient, like the prison ambient, stuff like that. I, I, I adore. I don't know what it is, but obvi obviously put the, the the bigger tracks onto the OST is a better idea. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about the present track and the I thought it was quite boring to have a four-minute track like that in the soundtrack. Then I thought if I could add another layer to it, but then it would become another track. <laughs> so mm. people maybe didn't recognize it. Mm. Where is it from? So that makes I just sense, aban yeah. abandoned that idea. <laughs> What are your thoughts about scoring another Amnesia game in the future? Because we all know there's going to be another one. There's a demand for it. I, I, I've, I've, I cement this now. There's going to be 2030. Uh, there's going to be an Amnesia Dark Descent remaster with another Amnesia game. I'm cementing it now. I'm just I'm fully convinced that that's going to happen and we're going to see that. But if, if there was another Amnesia game in the future, what would you think about scoring it? If it was going to be a remaster, I wouldn't touch the original score. <laughs> yeah. But if it would be another Amnesia type of game, of course. That's good, yeah. What and you... I, 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 I don't know if they're going to be one, but uh, by knowing the success of the bunker, I could believe there would be hmm. another game. I'm fairly certain there's going to be another one. <laughs> I think people have sort of come off the... As, as more series are doing more and more games, I think that stigma of like, oh, they're milking it, I think that stigma is dying down. Um, and especially with the Amnesia series, people can say that a fourth game milked it or whatever, but that every game has done something new each time. So I, don't, I feel like there's space, there's still space in the series. There's still more that can be, that can be done and experimented with. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. And I hope the team enjoys that and leans into that a bit more. But um, that's just me personally, yeah. 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 So what are your thoughts on the Amnesia series as a whole so far? All of Dark Descent, Machine for Pigs, Rebirth, Bunker, everything, all put together. What do you think about the themes, the, the ambiences, the tone of each game, and just overall, what does Amnesia sort of mean to you now? Well, I haven't played the, the machine for the pigs at all, but uh, by touching the other games as the whole, uh, I think it's a very good series, uh, perhaps because um, 
they have similar elements to them. People like from the Dark Descent, like with the Rebirth, has those claustrophobic segments, and the bunker is almost everything about claustrophobic place to be in mm. with uh, with the monster. And one good thing is that the floor they share at least uh, three games. I don't know about the machine for weeks, but uh, I think it has the common lore. You, 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 you can, yeah. you can uh, say there is or not. <laughs> machine for pigs. I don't even think frictional games know. <laughs> machine for pigs does some very interesting things with the lore. Now we move on to the fan questions. So I'm not going to try and pronounce the name. Don't read it. Somebody asked if that the radio song that plays in the Soldier Quarters was intentionally made to sound similar to Alexander's ending theme from Dark Descent. What, what are your thoughts on that? This listener has very good ears. <laughs> they do. It's something yeah. I also noticed immediately. I was like, oh, that's the exact same. It's the, it's <laughs> I give a couple of hints. The, the actual song, not the piano one itself. Piano was a, like a modified version for this. Is from 2009, and uh, its name in French, I can speak French, but the souvenir du passé means uh, like memories from past. So there's the hint for you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked why the rat chase music exists when you don't actually get chased by the rats in game. Was that a planned thing at first, or was it just a feature that they sort of scrapped? Maybe they scrapped it. Hmm. Actually, there's the rats sort of chase you, like if you're very near to them, might bite you, but uh, it's not the kind of chase you can hear from the music track itself. It's mm. not the kind of big chase. They don't use the, the third layer at all in the game, which is kind of a shame, but see, yeah. when when I data mined the, the demo files, I genuinely thought the bunker was going to have a sequence with a giant rat. Uh, and that would have kind of been cool, like just turning around, seeing this giant fuck off thing just racing towards you. It would have been sort of like Penumbra Worm. It would have been cool, to, cool to see. Um, but that didn't happen, so I was let down. This person asked if you have a favorite song from from the game music. I would choose the end credit song. End credits. Yeah, that's my favorite track. But the, from the ambient tracks, I choose. Perhaps sold it quarters. Hmm. That's the most uh, like it has a mo lot more going on it than than other tracks. Hmm. I, I do like the little trumpet refrain, the little. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's from me actually. The announcement trailer, the first one for for Bunker. The song that's playing on the radio in the soldiers' quarters is different from the one that plays now. What is it? What is that one? That's bothered me for months. <laughs> I, I tried to listen to it, but uh, I can't recognize it to be like an early version of the team. No, it's completely different. And I, no, I wonder but, but if... then I thought that they had the, this guy who's doing all the trailer music for, mm. for, for them. So that must be the one who did it, perhaps. Yeah, I was going to say, because you make, like, all of the music in the games, but Tobias uh, Helkvist, he does some yeah. trailer music. I think the other two did. Uh, Samuel, when he was there, I think he did something. I don't I don't even know if Samuel still works there or not. Someone asked if some tracks were inspired by Machine for Pixies soundtrack, which... Have you played that yet? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't played Machine for Pixies, but I, I have heard the score for at least part of it. Mm. Okay. It's nice music, quite a differently done to what I do, mm. but I know it didn't act as an inspiration for me. Because th there are like certain similarities, in interestingly enough, in some of Rebirth tracks and a couple of Bunkers tracks, but uh, quite similar to Machine for Pigs in a couple of ways. And it, it was always interesting hearing that. Like he's probably not listened to that track, but he he did the same thing. That that, that was just really interesting to me. This person wonders what the most expensive piece of equipment or software that went into the soundtrack was. Do you want to? Do you want to tell us that? Yeah, I don't have that expensive equipment. I have a. My thing is like over a thousand euros, hmm. except my sound card. But uh, that has been 
I wrote it that long a time ago. But uh, maybe if you look at it as a whole, the module are set up maybe one to two thousand euros, but that's the most expensive. The plugins are not that expensive in comparison, for example. But I don't like to spend too much money to to instruments like that. You can get good instruments quite cheaply these days. Mm. Music producers would rather spend like small sums of money across twenty different products than buy yeah. one big thing. Yeah. Unless it's like a real instrument, then then they'll splurge. Yeah, I once went into that trap. I bought this very expensive synthesizer and then I after a while when I was using it I decided, oh, oh wait, this is not for me. <laughs> Right, and the last question, uh, this person asked, if you enjoyed making the music and if you learned anything new or interesting while working on it. Yeah, of course I've enjoyed it. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. The, the fun part is like trying to evolve, like trying to experiment with new things. That's the fun part. When you achieve something, you get so happy, like a weird, weird sounds. Mm. That almost are proud of them. And by that, I, I of course learn new things. I try to learn new things. I'm glad you still find enjoyment out of this stuff and still find creative ways to do things. That's always good. It's always good to, I think I said this last time, but it's always good to keep evolving, keep trying new stuff. And I'm glad to see you still have that mindset. It's quite refreshing. So. Yeah, I wish I had more time to learn more instruments, but. Uh... Yeah, Sometimes Life. There's, a, there's a limit, yeah. <laughs> Only there are more hours in the day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. This was really, really fun. Uh, I got to learn a lot of stuff, and I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Um, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you as well for having me. Bye. Do you have a teddy bear? Sorry. I was meant to ask no. you this ages ago. You don't? No, I don't. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. Because this is Marker. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, <laughs> uh, a friend. The the, yeah. Oh, I have no idea you brought them. They had a little rabbit from the bunker as well. That's on the agenda. <laughs> That's on the menu. I have this. Oh, do you want to see something else? Stupid as. Oh, hello, my little ones. All right. <laughs> oh, hello. You look like a young Weir Al <laughs> 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 oh, our, why... sir, sir, our sir had similar hair <laughs> maybe in the 70s <laughs> it looks pretty similar I see had, had longer hair but not so curly Oi, do you want to buy a wig <laughs> <laughs>